AP Physics. We're going to be working through uh, part of the student workbook, Unit 3, uh, Part O, the gravitational force. I think this is the last question in the student workbook that's dealing with Unit 3. Uh, and let's go ahead and read through the scenario here. It says, Angela, Blake, and Carlos are studying the data table to the right, which shows the mass, orbital radius, and orbital period of four planets. They note that the orbital period increases, but disagree about why this happens. Their arguments are as follows. So we've got Mercury uh, with a mass of 0.3, with an orbital radius of 57. Looks like the, the radius goes up every time. And it also looks like the mass seems to go up every time. So like 0 0.3, 4.87, 5.97. Uh, and then the orbital period seems also to increase. Now this is in years. Okay, so um, here we go. Let's see what they have to say. Angela says, it appears that the more mass the planet has, uh, the longer its period is. This is because more massive objects are more difficult to move, so these objects move slower in their orbits. Okay, that is what Angela said. Uh, Blake said, no, all the planets move at the same speed around the sun, but planets with greater orbital radius must take longer circumference orbits causing their orbital periods to be greater. Mm, interesting. Uh, and then Carlos says, uh, it is the case that further radius planets must make further circumference orbits, but the further planets also go slower, oh, sorry, the farther planets also go slower because there is less gravitational force acting on them. Okay, so these are the three cases that they would like to make uh, and I believe we're going to have to pick these three different cases apart later in the next section. Uh, but before we do that, it says that for part A, uh, we need to create an equation. And it says, beginning with basic equations for gravitational and centripetal force and an equation that relates speed and period of circular motion, derive, oh, there's that word again, our favorite word that says derive, that means we're going to have to pick something from the formula sheet, derive an expression for the orbital period of this planet in terms of R, M, V, and physical constants as necessary. Note, it may be helpful for part B for you to number your steps so that they may be referred to later. Well, we can keep them numbered as like, you know, step one, step two, step three, step four. So that can be helpful to us right now. We don't have to number them because it looks like on this worksheet, they're already numbered. However, on the AP exam, you might actually want to do that. So uh, if you've got two objects, and this looks awful familiar. So if you've got an object around the center, and then there is a smaller object going around that object, then what we're going to have to do is determine the gravitational force that is acting on them. So uh, if there are two bodies right here and one of them is uh, a distance away from each other, then it looks like we're going to have to identify that this force of gravity is going to be a centripetal force, a.k.a. that's going to be what's keeping it inside the circle. So what we need to do first is write out Newton's uh, law of universal gravitation. So we'll say that the force of gravity uh, is equal to big G. Did they give us anything about this? Uh, let's see here. Okay, looks like they didn't give us any hints on what to number these so or what to label these. So why don't we call this one the mass of the sun? Because these are planets. And let's call this little guy, let's call it MP for the mass of the planet. So you've got big G uh, times the product of the masses. So it's going to be the mass of the sun times the mass of the planet, and that's going to be divided by uh, the radius squared r, or the distance between the two, and that they did give us a hint of that one because it says right there to make it r. Uh, oh, it does look like, I'm sorry, look, look at this. It did say that uh, planet of mass little m, and then the sun of mass big m. So, oopsie. Um, well, let's just go with what we got at the moment since I've already written it in pen and it's kind of over. Uh, so that's going to be divided by the big R squared. And that's going to be uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation. And you can go ahead and put here that the centripetal force is going to be... Uh, 
centripetal force. Remember, call it centripetal. Don't call it centrifugal. Uh, the centripetal force is the flavor uh, is gravity. Okay. Uh, next step that we need to do is we need to uh, show that this is actually going in circular motion. So since this is a centripetal force, then we can say that this force of gravity is a centripetal force, and it's going to be equal to the mass of the planet times the velocity squared over big R. So, because remember, the centripetal force can always be written as mv squared over r, and that is going to be g times the mass of the sun times the mass of the planet divided by capital R squared. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say that what we did here is we substituted, uh, let's see, centripetal force, uh, make sure you spell it the whole way, for FG. Okay, and then for the next step, uh, I think we just have to do a little bit of algebra. We're really looking for the relationship between the period of the object. So uh, what we would want to do with the period of the object is we want to try to get our velocity uh, by itself. So let's multiply both sides by r. That's going to cause some cancellation. And then uh, both sides have the mass of the planet on it. So the mass of the planet is going to get crossed out. I'm going to go ahead and just mark both of those out. And I'll move this R over here. And when I move it to the top, what happens is the R's cancel out. So we're going to get that the velocity squared is going to be equal to big G uh, times the mass of the sun divided by the radius itself. Because one of these cancels out. Okay? And what we just did there was we just did some simplification. So we're just going to uh, call that simplify. Okay, uh, because we just canceled out some like terms. You could also, you know, if you said, hey, I canceled out the mass of the planets and I canceled out one radius, that would also count too. That, that's an equally valid step to write down. Okay, and then the next thing is, well, I don't, uh, it says that it wants us to try to relate the orbital period in terms of R, M, V, and physical constants as necessary, but I don't see the orbital period in here, and that's because we need to relate, we need to put in the second part of this, we need to relate the velocity as in the velocity is going around the circle at a constant speed. So if it's going around the circle at a constant speed, then this velocity is really going to be 2 pi times the radius, which is the circumference of the circle, divided by the time that it takes it to actually go around the circle itself. So it's going to be 2 pi over t. If we square all of that, that's going to become 4 pi squared r squared over the period squared, and then that's going to be equal to, nothing really changes over here, G big G times the mass of the sun divided by the radius, everything is all good over there. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to try to take this and rearrange it as best we can. So uh, we want to try to solve for T squared. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that this G M S over R Let's just say that that's all one fraction. That G can just as well be on the top over here. Let's take both fractions. Let's take both fractions and let's flip both of them over. So that would give me uh, T squared over 4 pi squared R squared is equal to uh, R over G times mass of the sun. And this is a trick that you could do. Uh, and then we're going to take this whole thing and we're going to move this whole part of this proportion up to the top. So it's going to be all of this and then one extra r. So that's going to be 4 pi squared r cubed on top over here. So after we move that over, it's going to be 4 pi squared r cubed divided by big G times the mass of the sun. And if we want to just try to solve for the period, we're going to need to take the square root of both sides because that's t squared. So what you'll end up with is that t is going to be equal to 4 pi squared times r cubed divided by big G times the mass of the sun. So we need to kind of write out our steps over here. Uh, so what did we do to go from this step? Uh, we substituted... 
uh, the velocity is equal to 2 pi times the radius over time. What we did down here is I just flipped uh, both fractions. As long as they're both fractions and you don't have any addition involved between them, uh, this is legal in at least 15 states. And then I, uh, let's see, what are you going to call that? Simplify? Because we just move some variables around. Simplify. All right. So uh, let's double check and make sure that we've actually got this correct. I'm going to move this down so that we can actually see what the heck is going on here. Uh, so we have, did, did we do what we were supposed to do? We derived an expression of the orbital period of the planet in terms of r, uh, v, and m, the mass of the sun, big M, the mass of the sun, and any physical constants is necessary. Well, pi is a constant, uh, 4 is a constant, and big G is a constant. Those numbers don't change, so that's okay. I don't see v in here, but that's okay because the velocity is a constant speed, and we had it up here. We just substituted it in as something else. So that'll give us uh, all of the steps that we have for the derivation of our formula. Derivations are always uh, pretty involved on the AP physics exam. And there's this, uh, this Kepler's law derivation, the relationship between the period squared and the radius cubed, usually shows up on the AP physics exam somewhere. Uh, sometimes it shows up as a straight derivation in an open response problem. So do keep that in mind uh, because you could actually see it again uh, very soon. All right, so we might be able to use that information for us later. Uh, so here's the next part where it says, you know, argumentation. So uh, your work in part A can be used to support or refute the arguments of the three students. Uh, for each student, explain which aspects of their reasoning is correct, if any, uh, and incorrect, if any, and cite the steps of work from part A, not your final answer, and explain how the steps supports or refutes that aspect. Okay. So uh, let's kind of go back over it and see. Uh, let's do Angela first. And Angela said that it appears that the more mass a planet has, so it appears that the more mass, the longer its period is. So what she's trying to say is she's trying to say that there is a relationship between the mass of the planets and the longer the period of the planets. Okay, keep in mind, this is the mass of the planet okay so we can see in one of these steps that that is not going to be the case because back up here in step two the mass of the planet cancels out so whenever you write a sentence for this one and i, I really once again want you guys to try to write these out in your own words okay so whenever you write out this sentence to explain what's happening here pay careful attention to step two because what you need to write out in Angela's case is that, hey, the mass of the planets is going to just end up canceling out. So it can't be related to that because it seems like the mass of the planets doesn't matter, which means Angela is not correct. Okay, and I don't think there's anything that um, really redeeming here in terms of uh, the... Yeah, it just ends up canceling out. Now, whenever they did say that um, more massive objects are more difficult to move, that is a true statement, but we're not really like taking planets and pushing them. So that statement is is kind of irrelevant. Uh, but if you wanted to be like, well, yeah, you know, Angela did say that, uh, you know, big planets have big inertia. You're like, well, okay, I, I could see that. I could see that. Uh, let's take a look at Blake. I should not have moved the page. I should have just kind of moved it down. Because uh, Blake was like, no, all the planets move at the same speed. Ooh. All, all the planets move at the same speed around the sun. But planets with a greater orbital radius must make a longer circumference uh, orbit, causing the orbital periods to be greater. Okay, well, uh, hmm. okay, so he says that they move at all speeds same speed, no matter what, around the sun. And well, let's look down here at these different steps and see if we can find something that would uh, agree or disagree with that. So I'm looking for something with velocity in it. So, you know, there's a centripetal force being gravity is mv squared over r. And then if we take it and just solve for the velocity of the object, we can find out that, you know what, in step three, 
the velocity of the object is not going to be the same all the way around, because if it was the same, it would be related to just constant values. And I'm looking at this, and I see, okay, well, hey, velocity uh, is related to big G. That's a constant. That doesn't really change. Uh, and the mass of the sun is going to be, uh, <laughs> hopefully, a constant value. That's not really going to change at all. Uh, but the radius of the object, that does seem to change. So whenever you're writing this sentence out, it looks like Blake uh, has a little bit of an issue dealing with step three. Okay, so whenever you talk this through in the sentence, make sure that uh, step three is addressed here in this case. Uh, let's see here. Is there anything else that he said? Uh, anything that would actually be right to go along with it? And the answer is, uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, a bigger radius would give a larger period value. So that would actually work out as well, too. And then when we look at Carlos, Carlos says that, um, let's see, I got to pull him up for a second. Carlos says, it is the case that the farther radius planets must make further circumference in orbits but the further planets also go slower because there's less gravitational force acting on them. So looking at the gravitational force as a centripetal force right here, step two verifies Carlos's idea. And then also he says that uh, because there's less gravitational force acting on them, then uh, let's see here. Can we verify that as it goes further away? Uh, and I think if we look at the less gravitational force acting on them, yeah, because it is related by inverse R squared down here in the bottom. So you can use these steps as well to verify Carlos's plan. So it looks like between all three of them, Carlos has the, the right of it between the three. So I hope this was helpful to you guys, and uh, I will talk to you later.